Hey everyone, welcome back. As you may have heard, the SAT is changing next year. The paper test is going to be replaced by a digital exam. And if you're a sophomore when this video comes out, or a student in the class of 2025, you're facing a very interesting dilemma. During the first half of your junior year, in the coming fall of 2023, the SAT will still be offered in its current format, as a paper and pencil test. But later in your junior year, during the spring of 2024, the SAT will change to the digital format. So this has my sophomores asking, which one should they take? Or should they consider both? And what about the ACT? So in this video, let's get into all of these details, along with what I call the secret weapon of test prep. And if you find this information helpful, you know the drill. Hit that like button, share the video, and come subscribe to the channel. For those new here, my name is Daniel, and I have been an SAT and ACT tutor for over 20 years. Okay, let's talk about how current sophomores should prepare for the upcoming digital SAT. Let's start with a quick recap of what you can expect to see on the digital SAT. I covered these details in full in my video here. Check it out after you finish this video, but here's a quick recap. The SAT is going digital in the spring of 2024. When it does, students will need to take the test on a laptop or a tablet, and if they don't have one, one will be provided by College Board. You'll still need to go to a school or a test center to take the exam. In other words, you can't take the test at home. But some good news, scores will now come out in a matter of days, not weeks. And now a calculator will be allowed on the entire math portion of the exam. The new test will still be scored out of 1600, and it will still cover mostly the same content areas as the current test, reading, grammar, and math. But the new test won't just deliver the current test on a digital platform. The questions themselves will look very different. There will be shorter reading passages, new types of verbal questions, and less wordy math questions. But the biggest change about the new test is that it's going to be computer adaptive. What does that mean? It means that not everyone will see the same test. Your performance on the earlier questions will dictate what you see on the later questions. It'll work like this. Each section will be broken up into what are called different modules. If you do better on the first module, then you'll see harder questions in the second module. And if you don't do as well in the first module, you'll see easier questions in the second module. This means that students who are taking the test on the same day, and even in the same room, will not necessarily see the same test. The questions might overlap a bit, but they won't be identical. These modules help College Board pinpoint your score more quickly. So another piece of good news is that the new test will be shorter than the current test going from just over three hours to just over two hours. So that's a quick recap of the digital test. Again, I cover many more details in that other video. Check it out. And in that video, I get into the timeline of how this will all happen. I won't cover the entire timeline here. Instead, let's just zoom in on the part of the timeline that's relevant to you as a sophomore. And just a side note, when I say sophomore, I'm talking about what grade you're in now at the time that this video comes out in February of 2023. But if you catch this video in the summer or fall, then of course you'll be a junior by then. But just for simplicity's sake, let's call you sophomores for the rest of the video. Here's the timeline of how sophomores should prepare for the upcoming digital SAT. Let's look at that first row in the spring of 2023. Going left to right in the spring of 2023, the digital test will be offered, but only to international students. Students in the US won't see it yet. Let's give that box a D for digital test. And continuing across the row, the PSAT 10 will still be offered on paper along with the SAT that is given in the US. Let's call those PP for paper and pencil tests. And as we move into the fall of 2023, International students will still see the digital exam, but the PSAT will now be offered digitally as well. However, the SAT that is given in the US will still be on paper. These will be the last dates for the paper test. I'll cover the exact dates in just a few minutes. And then by the spring of 2024, everything will be digital. The international tests, the PSAT, and the SAT that is given in the US. And when this transition occurs, 
College Board is going to make a clean break to the digital format. In other words, there won't be a window when you have the option to take either the paper exam or the digital test. Once the digital test is introduced, that will be your only option. However, some students do have testing accommodations where they specifically require a paper test. Those students will still be able to take the test on paper, but for everyone else, the test will be digital. So that's the timeline of when this will all happen, which leads to the next question, which format should you consider and when? Or should you think about both formats? To answer all of that, let's talk about a critical part of your test prep that no one ever talks about, the QAS report. The QAS report stands for Question and Answer Services. What is the QAS report? The current paper version of the SAT is offered seven times a year, but not all of those test dates are created equal. You should consider some of those test dates over others. Why? It's not because the test is easier in any given month or anything like that. It's because only certain months offer the QAS report. The QAS report is a feature that allows you to analyze your questions after you take the test. You pay an extra fee for this, but it's well worth it, and it's only offered during certain testing months. Here's how it works. And again, this is only for the current paper version of the test. After the test, the scores usually start to appear online about two Fridays later. They won't always appear that first day, but they'll start to pop up 13 days after you take the test. For the test dates that don't offer the QAS report, College Board will only post your scores. You won't get to see the actual questions. But for the test dates that do offer the QAS report, College Board will post the test questions along with your scores. And this is a critical tool to help you with your test prep. Now, obviously, the goal is to take the test as few times as possible. But if you need to take the test again, the QAS report offers incredibly helpful information for you for your next round. First and foremost, you can see exactly what you're missing question by question, and this helps you pinpoint exactly what topics to study. So maybe you could see that you missed this math formula in this section or a certain grammar and punctuation topic in that section. Also, you can catch what careless errors you made. So maybe you could see that you knew exactly how to do a question, but you just made an arithmetic error or a computation mistake. You can also see the types of wrong answer traps that you're falling for. For example, on reading comprehension, there's something called a distortion trap, where one of the wrong answers will list an answer that's sort of what the author's saying, but not quite exactly what the author's saying. And you could also analyze your timing and your pacing. So maybe you could see that you're running out of time in a certain section, or just running out of steam and tired at the end of the test. These are the sorts of things that you could learn from your QAS report, along with many other aspects of your test-taking performance. It is an essential test prep tool, but again, no one talks about it. Whenever I'm playing relief pitcher or taking over for another tutor or some sort of prep class, my students and their parents are always surprised when I bring up the QAS report. Or more specifically, they'll often say something like, why didn't our class tell us about this? Or if we knew this, we would have taken the test in month A rather than month B. And I don't want you to make the same mistake. Unfortunately, the QAS report is only offered for certain months. So here's a breakdown of when it's offered. The paper SAT is offered in August, October, November, December, March, May, and June. However, the QAS report is only offered for the October, March, and May exams. So for years, this was my typical speech to students. If they wanted to be very proactive, I would suggest that they aim for the October test during the fall of their junior year. The reason why, the October test was the last one that offered the QAS report until the March test six months later. So for a student that was ready to hit the ground running after sophomore year, we would start over the summer. That would give us time to prep for the October test. However, many students were not ready for that. Instead, we would let them settle into junior year and begin their prep over the winter. That would still give us ample time to prep for the March and May exams, which also offered the QAS reports. So for years, those were the two paths that I suggested for my students, either starting early to make a pitch into the October test or starting over the winter to make a push into the March and May exams. 
both were perfectly good options. But for those who are now sophomores, I'm changing my advice for next year. This coming fall, at the start of your junior year, the paper exam will be offered for the last time on October 7th, November 4th, and December 2nd. Then, in 2024, the digital exam will begin. So here's what I'm suggesting for my current sophomores. The current version of the paper test is the devil we know, so to speak. There are many practice tests that reflect this format. Therefore, we have a much better sense of what you can expect to see on those tests. Granted, College Board did just come out with a few practice tests that reflect the new digital format, and over the coming months, they'll hopefully release more. Still, we know much more about the paper test. So I'm suggesting that my sophomores consider the paper test this fall, not because they're necessarily ready, which would usually be the deciding factor, but because it is the devil we know, and as an extension of that, the devil we can more fully prep for. Which brings us back to the QAS report. Remember what we said before, the QAS reports are only offered for October, March, and May. So looking at these three test dates, October 7th is the last date that will offer the QAS report. So I'm not only suggesting that my sophomores take the paper exam, I'm specifically suggesting the October 7th test date. This is the last chance you'll have to analyze your questions. The QAS reports are not offered for November or December. So those test months won't release the questions. So in a perfect world, maybe you're one and done. You do great on the October test and you're retired at the beginning of junior year. Now I'm the first to admit that certainly doesn't happen for everyone, but it does happen for some of my students and I hope it happens for you. And if so, good job. But in an imperfect world, let's just say that you're gonna take another shot at the November or the December exams after you take the October test. The test scores from October 7th should come out on October 20th, and along with the scores, so will the questions. This way, you can analyze exactly what you're missing from the October test as you prep for the November or December tests. Now, full disclosure. In years past, I would not usually recommend the October SAT for everyone. That is rather early in your junior year, and for years, it was indeed too early for many of my students. There's a lot of data to suggest that students won't see their best scores until the spring of junior year or even the fall of senior year. One obvious reason for this is practice. The more prep time you have, the more you learn, and the more practice tests you take, the better you'll do. But then there's also the developmental factor. High school students, and I hope you sophomores forgive me for this, are continuing to mature every day. So as they get further into their junior and senior year, they continue to develop not only their academic potential, but also their emotional maturity. And this certainly can affect their test taking performance. So again, I fully concede that taking the test so early in junior year would not be my typical advice. But this coming year is unique. I'm no longer letting the readiness factor drive the bus, so to speak. Instead, it's all about taking advantage of your last chance to view your QAS report. Now this begs the question, well, if I'm not ready to take the paper test this fall, what about waiting for the QAS report for the digital exam? At the time of this filming, there is no information from College Board about if the QAS report will start for the digital exam. This is speculation, but rumors are that the QAS reports are going away. And boy, would I love to be wrong about that. It is such a helpful tool for students, and it would be a shame if College Board was getting rid of it. Again, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. I'll keep you updated as soon as more information comes out on this topic. But we do know that the upcoming October exam will offer the QAS report. So even though I wouldn't typically recommend it for everyone, I strongly suggest that the juniors sit for that test. Now, just to play devil's advocate, let's consider a few reasons why you may not want to take the SAT this coming fall. First, as we just said, is the readiness factor. You may not feel ready to take the test so early in the fall of junior year. And that's certainly a fair point. But there's really no downside. It's just another dart to throw at the board. If you do well, great. And if not, no harm, no foul. The digital test is right around the corner. And on that point of there being no downside, students sometimes tell me that they think they, quote, have to submit every score to colleges. 
or they tell me how a guidance counselor once told them that certain colleges, quote, require seeing every test score that they have. And yes, I'm making air quotes with my fingers as I say that. I'm going on record to say that this is not true, but that does come with certain caveats. I cover all of these details in my video here. Check it out. But briefly, you can choose to submit the scores from any test date that you have, or you can choose not to submit the numbers from any test date. It's up to you. So there is no downside to taking a shot at the October test. If you do well, great. And if not, you don't have to submit those scores to colleges. Again, that does come with a few stipulations. Check out that video for those details. And with all of the uncertainty regarding the new test, I'm betting that many students will flock to the ACT next year instead. This might be a good idea for some, but not for all. Check out my video here where I talk about the pros and cons of the ACT. Some students are very strong ACT candidates, but others are not. The short answer? It depends. Watch that video after you finish this one. It talks about how to decide if the ACT is the right test for you. And if it is, side note for a moment, the ACT also gives you the chance to analyze your questions from certain months. It's called the TIR report, or Test Information Release. And the ACT offers this for December, April, and June. So if you decide to take the ACT, take advantage of that during those months. And finally, some students just might prefer the digital test format over the paper test format. Maybe they like the shorter passages, the shorter test, or the digital interface in general. And those are certainly fair points. Still, that doesn't necessarily mean not to take the paper test. So here's what I would suggest. Let's go back to that timeline from a few minutes ago. Back to the middle row. In the fall of 2023, there will be a very interesting overlap. On the left, students outside the U.S. will be taking the digital test. On the right, students in the U.S. will still be taking the last round of the paper test. But in the middle will be the round for the first digital PSAT. College Board has not announced these dates yet, but it's typically mid-October. In other words, in October of your junior year, you have a chance to take the October 7th SAT as a paper test, and then the PSAT as a digital test. Now, I don't want to overtest anyone, but again, we are in very unique times with the upcoming test season. So in addition to the October 7th SAT on paper, I would also suggest taking the digital PSAT a few weeks later. Certainly for the scores, it's just another data point to help you see how you do, but more so for the experience. The digital PSAT in October can be a totally pressure-free trial run to see how you feel about the digital format. Maybe you like it. Maybe you hate it. In either case, I'd recommend taking it. You can think of it as a completely relaxed dress rehearsal for the digital format, but still try your best on it to get an accurate reading of the scores. And that way, by the winter of your junior year, you'll have SAT scores from the paper test, along with PSAT scores from the digital format. Plus, that PSAT will give you a sense of whether or not you like the digital format. All of that information can help you make a more informed decision on what to do next. So as a sophomore, you're in a very interesting position. But think of it as an opportunity. That might sound cheesy, but it's true. You have not one, but two test formats to showcase your potential. And most students don't get that chance. To help you with your test prep, come subscribe to the channel and take advantage of all of the free lessons I have posted here. These videos are designed to help you bridge the gap between what is not taught in high school and what is considered fair game on the SAT and the ACT. Check them out, along with the videos that I already mentioned today. I have a link for those down in the description. And leave a comment below with any questions you have. I'll do my best to answer each one as we navigate the new digital test format together. Thanks for watching. And remember, plan your work, work your plan.